Welcome to Electron Line. Our next example again is a second order differential equations. It's homogeneous. It does have two initial conditions. The function evaluated 0 is equal to 1 and the derivative of the function evaluated 0 is equal to 7. We have some reference equations there to help us solve this problem. So first we need to take the the uh, Laplace transform of both sides of the equation, so we'll do it one term at a time. The Laplace transform of the second derivative can be shown to look like that. So therefore we can say that it's equal to s squared times the Laplace transform of the function minus s times y evaluated at zero and minus y prime evaluated at zero. So this represents the Laplace transform of the second derivative of the function. Now we're going to take minus 2 times the Laplace transform of y prime and that shows you over here how to do that. So we take s times the Laplace transform of the function minus the function evaluated at 0. Notice that all of this is multiplied times the minus 2 which we have over here. And finally minus 3 times the Laplace transform of the function itself. And that equals the Laplace transform of 0, which of course is 0. Now we can go ahead and plug in what these are equal to. Notice the function evaluated 0 is equal to 1 and the derivative evaluated 0 is equal to 7. So this becomes s squared times the Laplace transform of y minus s times y at 0, which is 1 minus y prime at 0, which is 7. Now minus 2s times the Laplace transform of y. And since the function evaluated at 0 is equal to 1, minus 2 times a minus 1 would be a plus 2. And here we get minus 3 times the Laplace transform of y. And that equals 0. Now we're going to combine like terms move everything that, well, let's me combine like terms first. So we have s squared times the Laplace transform of y. We have a minus s by itself, minus s, a minus 7 and a plus 2 is a minus 5. Minus 2s times the Laplace transform of the function, minus 3 times the Laplace transform of the function, equal 0. So now we can go ahead and take the two terms that do not involve the Laplace transform of the function, move those to the other side, and then factor out the Laplace transform of the remaining three terms here that have that in it. So we have the Laplace transform of y times, we have an s squared, minus 2s, and minus 3. Equals, we move the minus s and minus 5 over, we get s plus 5 on the other side. And then we divide both sides by this quantity right here. So we can say that the Laplace transform of y can be written to be equal to s plus 5 divided by s squared minus 2s minus 3. So now all we have to do is take the inverse Laplace transform of this to figure out what the function is equal to. Hmm. Before we do that, let's factor this. So this can be written as s plus 5 divided by so we have an s and an s we need a uh, minus 3 and a plus 1 so minus 3 plus plus 1 because notice that if I multiply I get the minus 3 when I add the 2 I get a minus 2 so that's correct but now we have to solve for that we have to put into a format so we can take the inverse transform and one of the methods to do that would be to use partial fractions so this can be written as a over s minus 3 and plus b divided by s plus 1. So all we have to do now is determine what a and b are equal to. To do that, we'll take this portion of the equation. So notice we have a left side and a right side, an equal sign. We're going to multiply both sides by the lowest common denominator, which is s minus 3 and s plus 1 combined. So we multiply both sides by that quantity. When we do that, we end up with the following. The left side will be s plus 5 because the denominators cancel. That equals a times the missing part of the denominator, which is s plus 1, plus b times the missing part here, which is s minus 3. 
which means that S plus 5 is equal to A plus B times S and plus A minus 3B. So you can see here that on the left side we have an S term, we have an S term on the right side, the coefficient here is 1 and the coefficient here is A plus B, which means that 1 equals A plus B. And then we also have the constant term 5, which is equal to this constant term right here, which means that 5 is equal to A minus 3B. So here we have two equations, two unknowns. We're going to solve this one for one of them. So we can say that A equals 1 minus B and plug that into A over here. So we get 5 is equal to 1 minus B minus 3B. Bring the 1 over here and combine these two. That gives us 4 equals 4B. Oh, minus 4B. I can't forget the minus sign. Minus 4B, which means that B is equal to minus 1. And if B is equal to minus 1, 1 minus a minus 1 is, well, I could say A equals 1 minus a minus 1. So A equals 2. So now we know what a and b are equal to, which means that we can write that the Laplace transform of the function is equal to a, which is equal to 2, over s minus 3, plus b, actually it should be minus b, because b is a negative quantity, minus 1 over s plus 1. And now all we have to do is to find y is to take the inverse transform, so y equals the inverse Laplace transform of 2 divided by s minus 3 and minus 1 over s plus 1. Okay, the constant 2 can be factored out, so to speak, so we have 1 over s minus 3. If we simply had 1 over s, that simply gives us the unit step function, so this can then be written as the unit step function of t multiplied times e to the 3t, because there's a shift there of 3, so we have e to the positive 3t, and we multiply that times 2, because we still have the constant here, and then minus, again, we have u of t multiplied times e to the minus t, because we have a shift here, and we have the 1 there. And so that, that is the way which you could write it. Also, you can imagine that if we only consider values of t greater than 0, this is always equal to 1 for values greater than 0. So we could also write this as 2e to the 3t minus e to the minus t. So it depends upon whether or not you want to include the unit step function or you simply want to consider it to be equal to 1. That will be the final answer. That therefore is the function y from this differential equation, and that's how you solve for it.